An important part of physics under kinematics is learning how to graph displacement versus time graph or a velocity versus time graph or acceleration versus time graphs. So what I'm going to do is uh, show you first of all, um, maybe with an example, this will be a hypothetical example. I've shown you this before, uh, something about you roll, let's say we roll a can up a hill. Now this could be a can of soup, let's just say. So again, we have this situation where this is the hill, and this here's the can. What you do is you roll it up the hill. Now what we can do is take a look at what its displacement will be versus time. So let's do that graph first. So I'm going to do a quick little sketch here. It doesn't have to be perfect. This is going to be time in seconds. And this is going to be displacement. So I'm going to write with a little S here. Or you could have d. I mean, either of those is okay. Although now it looks like s or as if it's one word. I'm just going to fix it here. So s, or we could say displacement. Both of these are the same thing. So this here would be measured in meters. Now if I start here, just try to think about what happens here. I mean, most people have a good understanding of what happens to this thing. As I push it up the hill with some sort of initial speed or velocity, it's going to go up the hill and slow down. That's because gravity is acting on it. So it's going to go up the hill, slow down, eventually stop, and then come back down. I mean, you can do this anytime you like. I mean, if you've ever been, I don't know, even on a skateboard or on a bike or something like that, just pedal a little bit or push a little bit on your skateboard to go up a hill and then don't do anything else then. Just stand on your skateboard or bike and you'll see you go up the hill, then you'll stop and you'll come back down. Unless you put on the brakes or something. So in this case, then at time t equals zero, my displacement, in other words, my distance from the start point is zero. Now I know then that at some later point in time, it's going to go up, it's going to stop, and it's going to come back down. So I know at some point in time, maybe over here, it's going to be back where it started. And it's going to reach some maximum height, I don't know, maybe here, which means then that it's going to have some sort of nice curvy shape. Whoops, I actually didn't really draw that very nice. Maybe I'll draw it like this over here. So it should do something like this. Some sort of nice um, parabola. Now, of course, I didn't even draw that one very nice. I'm not very good at drawing parabolas, apparently. There we go. Something like this right here. It should look like, well, a negative uh, x squared curve, if you know your math graphs. So if we look at this graph right here, I mean, I didn't do a very good job of it, but I think you get the idea that at some time it has a maximum displacement. Now let's take a look at what the velocity does. So let's take a look at a graph of that. So if on the same axis or same, uh, I guess, same time scale here, I want to graph something different. Now this time I want to do, whoops, I guess I just moved that. I shouldn't have. So this one right here, then I want to graph velocity versus time. So that'll be V with a little line on it like this. That'll be meters per second. Now we learned uh, before that the velocity is just the rate of change of displacement. And what that really means is it's the slope of, a, of the graph here of displacement. So that means at some certain point. Let's take a look then right here. If I was to draw myself a tangent line right here, it would be something that would go like this. It would be something with a positive slope. What about if I picked over here? Well, this would be something with a negative slope. See, if I picked over here and I drew myself a little tangent line, that would be negative. And over here, it would be a slope of zero because the tangent line would be going across like this. So because of that, then what I can do is, well, I can draw myself, this could be zero, velocity. This could be some positive value and this could be some negative value. So at this, uh, initially here, it's got some steep value. Remember now the steepness of this graph tells you the value of this graph. So the steepness, well at the beginning here, it's quite steep and it's positive. So I'm going to assume it's some positive value for V. Now over here, what's happening? This is Ne uh, well, it's not even negative, it's zero. It's got a slope of zero right here. If I drew a tangent line, I have a zero slope. So that means matching up with that exact time will be something right here with a slope of, well, this has a slope of zero, so this has a value of zero. And further on, what happens? Well, here, 
the slope is negative. And so I could just continue it on and it'll be something like this. And it turns out the value of the slope is going to be changing, of course. Whoops. I really got to learn how to draw straight lines a little bit better here. There we go. Something like that. Well, I didn't really draw it very nice, but you get the idea, hopefully. So that means at some later time, the slope is still positive, but it's less. And over here, it's still positive, but less. Over here, it's zero. This should match this point right here. I'll just make it a bit wider. <laughs> That's a bit cheap to do, but there we go. And what we can do then is take a look at the acceleration. And the acceleration is just the slope of the tangent line for the velocity. So the acceleration is going to be meters per second squared this time. I'll put the little vector sign on it. Still time in seconds. And I'm going to draw myself again some sort of value here that's zero. So this could be a positive acceleration. This is a negative acceleration. Now take a look at this graph though. If I picked this random point right here, it has a tangent line like this. If I pick this point right here, it also has a tangent line right there. And if I pick this point right here, it also has a tangent line with the same slope. Do you notice then that the slope is the same here or here or here or here or here or here? It's all the same constant negative value. So I don't know what that value is, but whatever that value is, this is a constant negative value. Whoops. Again, I'm not very good at drawing straight lines, apparently. There we go. So this right here would be my acceleration. It would be some negative value. So let's take a look then if this makes any sense. I want to give you a hint. If ever you're looking for, uh, because what you could often be asked on a test or in another situation, you might be curious about, okay, well, what if I give you a displacement versus time graph? And you're asked though, to say something about the velocity. How do you deal with that? I mean, you could do it the way I just did it. And in fact, that's a nice trick I'd like to show you here is that what you do, or what I do at least, is I like to say this, that if I go down in the graph, and what I mean by going down is, you know, if you're given one of these graphs and you want some information about velocity, well, that's like going down, you know, because you have displacement, down below it is velocity, and down below that is acceleration. So if you've drawn these three different graphs like this, now keep in mind the shape of the graphs is not really important. You could be given totally different situations. But the idea holds true that if you go down, you take the slope of the tangent. In other words, if you know calculus, we call that the derivative. So that's what you do here. So that means if I'm given a graph of displacement versus time, and I'm asked, you know, what's the velocity from this time to this time? Well, then you can just take the slope of the tangent at whatever time you're looking for. So that's how you could do that. Or if you're given a graph of velocity versus time, and you're asked, what's the acceleration? Well, then you would know that that's the slope of this graph. So that would give me that. Now your velocity might be totally changing. So that means your acceleration might change. These graphs can look totally different. But if this here is a displacement versus time graph, if, if we start with this graph here, then we know that the velocity time graph will do this and the acceleration time will do this. So this first one sort of tells you how the other ones will act. But what if you're given a velocity time graph, let's say, and you're asked, what's the displacement from zero to, I don't know, five seconds? Well, then you have to do something opposite to that. So this is when you go up in the graph. Here you take the area under the curve. So in this sensor here, if you know your calculus, that means you take the integral. That just means take the area under the curve. That's it. That's all it does. That's all you need to know. So again, no matter how your graphs look, or no matter what shape they have, if you draw them sort of in order like this of displacement versus time or velocity versus time or acceleration versus time, a nice little trick I like to use is if I go down, so to speak. So if I start with a graph of displacement and I'm asked for velocity or start with a velocity graph and I'm asked for something about acceleration, I think, oh, I go down. So I take the slope of the tangent. And conversely, if I'm going up, so let's say you're given an acceleration graph and you're asked about the velocity, or you're given a velocity graph and asked about displacement, just take the area under the curve. In other words, you take the integral.